Hello, uh, Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa, Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In the previous two videos, I was showing, basically uh, talking about the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, and how it was vital for carrying heat and redistributing heat on the planet, basically taking heat from the equator and bringing it to the poles. And I've, I've also been discussing two uh, very recent scientific papers that just came out that talk about how the AMOC has slowed down about 15%. Um, one of the papers was talking about within, since 1950. Um, so how is this significant uh, to, our, to, to our, our, our planetary climate system? How is this significant to people? Um, I'm, gonna, so, I'm gonna finish off um, some of the evidence from the second paper and then I'll just try to try to summarize it all and put it into into uh, context. Um, so what I was showing here is um, that the basically let's go back here. Actually, let's go back here and let's come back up and show you. OK, so what we're seeing here is the Gulf Stream off of the eastern coast of the U.S., or if you like, it's in the westernmost part of the Atlantic Basin, is slowing down. So because it's slowing down, it's not curving as much, and it's overriding the eastern, the, the continental shelf off the U.S. east coast. So this water here is anomalously warm. The Gulf Stream used to come right across up here, and it would carry a lot more heat, but now it's not going as far, so this area is colder. So this is the model showing this, and this is the actual data. So in the Atlantic Basin, the model and the data have very good agreement. Now in this uh, second paper that I was talking about, this is showing the water temperature in the Northwest Atlantic. Um, so this is off the, this is just off of the coast of North America on the continental shelf. And what we're seeing is, this is a year, um, so this is going over the last 1600 years, and what it's showing is that in the last, since about, uh, this is about 1840 or 1840 or so, so 1850, so in the last about 160 years, the water temperature has increased. Um, so this was uh, temperature anomaly, standard units, so we're almost at minus one here, and we're going to plus two. So about three degrees Celsius increase here of the water over the continental shelf on the eastern seaboard of the U.S. So sea level rise is very rapid there because the water is being pushed up onto the shelf next to the land because the water is very warm, warm water expands. So the root cause is that the Gulf Stream is slowing down because the AMOC has been slowing down. It's causing very rapid sea level rise. Uh, you, you know, scuba divers off Maine can't believe how warm the water is when they, when, they, uh, when they dive, for example. If we look at the northeast subpolar gyre region, this is the cold blob, if you like, south of Greenland. You can see the water temperature has got colder in that region because the Gulf Stream is not reaching where it was before. Um, this is now showing the, um, so now this is showing, this is the change in temperature. You're subtracting the, uh, you're taking a difference from these two graphs. So this is warming, this is colder. When you subtract them, then you're gonna get an even larger difference, right? So the contrast between those regions is larger. Now this is very important because that water temperature on the surface um, then will get propagated the temperature into the atmosphere. So what that can set up is it can set up very large temperature gradients in the atmosphere, which then set up large pressure gradients, which then set up very high winds, which then generate very, very large ocean waves um, and uh, huge increase the storminess. And this, these are storms that are heading over to Europe. Um, this is the, uh, the Labrador Sea, temperature and salinity. So the salinity is uh, dropping in this region here. Um, the temperature is actually increasing as we go down this way. Okay, and 
sorry, the temperature, sorry, the temperature, yeah, the temperature is 4.4. This is increasing as you go this way. This is the salinity increasing here. Okay, so what you're seeing is that the, um, there's also changes in the, below the surface of the Labrador Sea. Uh, we're getting more melt and more cold water uh, coming down from the Arctic as a result. And this is also, this is then showing the, um, this is showing the particle sizes in the cores. So like I said, when you have very large, when you have smaller um, grain sizes in the sediment, then um, the water is moving faster. Uh, when you get the larger grain sizes, it means the ocean current at the bottom has slowed down. It doesn't have enough energy to carry the larger uh, grain sizes, so they drop out into the sediment and they can be measured in, in the coring. So this is how we, how, how we extract the data here. Um, the AMOC has, so but, but this is arguing that the AMOCs responded to the recent um, centennial scale, 100 year scale, climate change rather than being driving it. So it's not like the, so the AMOC is changes are a result of the rapidly warming Arctic. Um, and there's no surprise there. The rapidly warming Arctic decreases the temperature of the equator, causes the jet streams to slow down and become wavier, causes the ocean currents to slow down and, uh, you know, go to different locations and respond differently. Okay, so this is uh, another confirmation of the, uh, of, so we've got the two papers here that have come out recently. Now, this article came out here um, on The Guardian, avoid Gulf Stream disruption at all costs, scientists warn. How close the world is to a catastrophic collapse of giant ocean currents is unknown, making halting global warming more critical than ever, scientists say. So we know serious disruption to the Gulf Stream you know, it is crucial in controlling global climate. It must be avoided at all costs, senior scientists have warned. Okay, uh, systems at its weakest ever recorded. Um, past collapses, again, have seen, we've seen some of the most extreme impacts in climate history. Western Europe becoming, going into freezing winters. We don't have that heat transported uh, to Western Europe. More severe storms in Europe. Okay, we're going to have more larger temperature contrasts in the water over short distances. That translates into the air temperatures, very large temperature gradients, very large pressure differences, high winds, high waves, more severe storms. Um, faster sea level rise on the East Coast. The water's overriding the East Coast from the Gulf Stream. It's warm, it expands, takes up more space. Um, and uh, increasing drought in the Sahel and Africa. Okay, um, so there's huge impacts and, um, you know, the, the AMOC has weakened by 15% since 1950 thanks to melting Greenland ice and ocean warming making seawater less dense and buoyant. Okay, uh, and again, um, this is like halting the world's rivers three times over. The weakening of 15% of the total 20 spur drops is three spur drops, one spur drop is all, is basically all of the world rivers flow. So three times over, or the Amazon flow stopping at 15 times over. Okay, so it talks about, you know, there's other things. Uh, basically, it talks about the movie and a widespread collapse of the AMOC. Uh, of course, the movie just, the movie has a lot of the science right, but not the time scale. Um, and this is interesting. As the AMOC weakens, it might actually increase summer heat waves. And we're seeing this. We're seeing these hump summer heat waves in Europe because it takes time for the cooling of the northern waters to cause cooling over the adjacent lands. Okay, so the cooler waters affect the atmosphere in a way that helps warm air to flood into Europe from the south, a situation already seen in 2015. So the idea is you get this massive cold pool south of Greenland, right? You get this trough of the jet stream, so you get a flow upwards of the jet stream, and that carries warm air into Europe, causing, you know, the, these heat waves. The other thing is, is last week, is that there was a study that showed Greenland's massive ice caps melting at the fastest rate in 450 years. So let's have a look at that paper, or that study, okay? So this is the Dartmouth, um, a, school, a school paper, 
And Greenland's warm 1.2 degrees compared to the 1890s. I think this is a very highly conservative number. So what these guys do did is well let let's look at the uh, let's look at the uh, paper and this is this comments here. We've seen after tragedies like Parkland, young people decide they want their voices to be heard. They have a huge impact. Everybody who's concerned about climate change needs to do a better job of voicing their opinion on what needs to change and expressing that opinion through the ballot box. Interesting point. So here's the paper. Um, so what basically, you know, I'll talk about the plain language summary. So ice core records of West Greenland melt and climate forcing. So basically what we know that Greenland is melting quickly from the GRACE satellite. It measures a gravity anomaly. It, as, as it orbits over Greenland, there's two satellites in tandem. As Greenland ice melts, the, that ice pulls the satellites closer together. But be, there, with less and less ice on Greenland, the satellites are pulled, uh, not pulled as much. And we can, we can correlate that to a loss of mass of ice in Greenland. We also have we can also measure the uh, water temperature coming up under the glaciers and uh, see that the, we're getting a lot more ice melt there. We know Greenland is shedding ice like crazy. It's, it's rising at an exponential rate with a doubling period of, I don't know, seven years, 10 years, something like that. But this is a direct measurement. What they did is they measured ice cores just at the surface of Greenland. And during melt, during warm summers, the ice at the surface melt and that water trickles down and then it refreezes. So when they do a core through the, at the surface going down a ways, they can measure the layers of ice and find out how many different layers there are and correlate it to the melting. So this is basically what they did. So computer models, the satellite showed the amount of snow melting each summer on Greenland has increased since the 80s, but to confirm it directly on the ice is difficult. When the surface snow melts, the water spreads into deeper layers of snow, refreezes as an ice layer. As fresh snow buries each of the summer's ice layers, the history of snow melt is preserved in the ice sheet. So they did set, they collected seven cores from Western Greenland that contain the history of ice layers back to 1966. They found more ice layers since the 1990s. By comparing the ice cores to a longer ice core from the same area, they show that today's melt rates are the highest since at least 1550. Year-to-year -year changes are caused by changes in the number of summer high-pressure systems. And so high pressure, warm temperatures, no clouds, lots of sunlight, melting ice, and fluctuating ocean temperatures near Greenland. Okay, so that's basically the gist of the study. Um, this is where the different cores were taken and the dates they were taken. And what we can see is um, that there's something called the melt feature percent measuring the percent of the through the core where there's been melting and refreezing and what you can see is there's a lot more of the uh, there's a lot more melt features being observed since 1995 here in all of these different cores okay so this is a direct measurement um, so what we see here is this is the melt features since, uh, so actually since 1970, it's been increasing, but since the 90s, it's been gyrating like crazy, really high, going up to 80, 85%. Okay, uh, this is the temperature on the Western Greenland ice sheet, June, July, August. We've seen the temperature rise. This is in, um, this is another one with uh, temperature here. Um, and these are the sea surface temperatures. So warmer sea surface temperatures, warmer, uh, warmer uh, conditions over Greenland, causing more melt. Um, this is showing, uh, this is showing uh, June to August surface temperature uh, from uh, model and also from reanalysis data. And you can see uh, there's not perfect cor cor well, p this is a correlation between the models. So the, the model and the reanalysis. Uh, is uh, th you can see regions here. There's some differences between it, but basically the Greenland is warming very quickly. There's a lot of, uh, and this is a problem because the AMOC um, slowdown will increase more and more and more. I mean, the, the slowdown, there'll be more and more slowdown of the ocean currents as Greenland sheds more and more of the ice, which goes as fresh water into the Atlantic and disrupts the the overturning circulation regions, the chimneys, and uh, 
you know, and then it feeds back. And so a huge tipping point. We have a problem. 